Judge, Mr. Jensen is going to make a statement to the court, um, and then if the court has any questions on credit, I would answer those. Go ahead, Mr. Jensen. Judge, I ask you to grant parole eligibility and ask you to consider the following. I have always sought to be a productive member of the community. To pay for college, I started a poem painting business that employed 10 college students and helped pay for multiple college educations. Upon graduating from college, I became a stockbroker. I was a successful broker and branch manager in the community for 21 years. The securities industry is one of the most heavily regulated. During my career as a stockbroker, I had no client complaints or regulatory issues of any kind. When charged, my securities licenses were suspended. Uh, to stay productive and support my family, I started a construction company. It is important to, for the court to know that while I was in bond, I started and ran that business. We built hundreds of homes, employing up to 36 people, while maintaining a perfect compliance record of the bond conditions, including stopping at the DA's office three times a week for five years to check in. I did not miss once. I took it seriously. I have been actively involved in local service organizations my entire life, beginning with a key club in high school, and the Rotary Club after college. While in custody at both the DOC and, and KCJ, I maintained a good record of behavior and work performance. I have always tried to make a difference and do everything I could the right way. Throughout this case, I have worked to maintain good relationships with the family and my boys, and they have supported me throughout. If released on parole, I have the support of the family with any need, including a place to live and transportation to help me get back on my feet. My parents are 87 and 85, and they need my help. I want to be there to help them and to be able to spend time together while we are able. I have a special relationship with each of the three boys and love them dearly. They lost their mom and me during very important years of their lives. David and Doug lost both parents, and Andy lost his dad. All three have been through an incredible ordeal over the past 25 years. They each struggled to find their own way, each doing what they needed to do to survive this on their own. It's taken a toll on them. They deserve my help if they want it. I want to be there for them, help them accept the verdict, and help them heal. I know that Doug has expressed anger with me in his current letter to the court. If at any time he wants my hope or wants to talk to me, I will be there for him in his time. David and Doug were young when Julie died, and their memories have faded. I'm hoping the time together with, will help them heal and allow me to help keep family memories alive in a way that a phone call never can. During the time I raised Doug and David on my own, I remember spending time with each of them doing things they loved. David and I would go fishing. We built fishing rods together. We played video games. Doug and I went golfing together, and we fished together. We spent entire summers together. Doug was also accompanying me to job sites and helping me during the summer. The three of us would go fishing and camp together all summer. Those memories with the boys are some of the happiest times of my life. When I went to prison, Doug was lost. He was sending me letters at Dodge saying that he was struggling without me. I later learned that Doug began cutting himself when he was about 13 years old. I didn't learn that till years afterwards, but I had just gotten to Dodge when this happened. While in prison, I made every effort to continue to be there for my sons. I have always tried to be there in any way I could while serving my prison time. Doug is hurting. I can tell that from the letter he wrote to the court. I wish I could turn the hurt away, but I can't. I love Doug with all my heart. It breaks my heart. It breaks my heart to see him hurting like this. If the court grants me parole, I will be there for Doug if he wants me to be there for him. If he doesn't want a relationship with me, I will respect that. I will always be there for him, whether in custody or out of custody, if his feelings change. <clears throat> This case has gone on forever. It's been 25 years. Nine years for the first trial, 16 years fighting for a new trial, multiple trips through all levels of state and federal courts, three judges, two trials, 
and both families have been on this journey through the system with me this entire time. David was eight. He's now 33. Doug was three. He's now 28. Andy was three when I was last sentenced in 2008. He's now 19. It has taken their entire lives. And now with the second verdict, I realize this case needs resolution where there will be no closure for my boys. Most important, I need to consider the needs of my family. They need to be able to put this behind them and move forward so they can heal. I want to be with them in whatever way they may need to help them heal. Please grant parole eligibility so that the family and I can move forward and heal. I can work to understand and find acceptance with the verdict. I can be there for my family who needs me. And please provide me the opportunity to show I can continue to do something positive with my life. Thank you.